We've just seen the worst mass coral bleaching event on record. It hit 83 countries, affecting 84% of the world's corals. Scientists say it's like an underwater bushfire. Much of the world's coral reefs have turned completely white. It seems to be happening faster than we were anticipating. Yet there is a glimmer of hope. The corals around one island nation went relatively unscathed. And its pristine coral reefs could hold the key to the ocean's survival. Palau is located in the Western Pacific Ocean. Coral reefs are central to the way of life here. It's really the foundations of who we are as a people, as a culture. We think of the ocean as a entity with a spirit. We don't think of the ocean as a resource to exploit. Palau's reefs are in great shape, and international scientists are drawn here to understand why. I've been working in Palau for 20 years, and the reefs have never looked healthier than they do now. And there are very few place, places in the world where you can say that. Palau's corals are less susceptible to bleaching, a stress response when the water gets too warm. Corals usually recover, but more severe and frequent heat waves are killing them. Palau hasn't experienced a mass bleaching event since 1998, while the Great Barrier Reef has experienced at least seven in that period. Research suggests the corals here have some ability to adapt to climate change. It's been remarkable that uh, for a, a small country, Palau has led the way in the study of how corals acquire thermal tolerance. At the Palau International Coral Reef Centre, groundbreaking research is underway to selectively breed the most heat-tolerant corals. We all come in different shapes and sizes. I think the same could be said for corals. Some people are more resilient, have a better immune system. Some corals are more heat tolerant than others. Studies here have discovered that heat tolerance can be passed down between generations through selective breeding. We were able to spawn them and create a new generation of heat tolerant corals. The team recently deployed these devices to restore a section of the outer reef. It's hard to see with the naked eye, but each one is home to 10 baby corals growing happily. There are 1,600 super corals in total, selectively bred from different species and multiple generations to maximise genetic diversity, giving them the best possible chance at surviving a marine heat wave. We don't know if we select, uh, we produce corals that are really uh, have a high heat tolerance, what happens if we outplant them on the reef? Do they survive? Do they grow? Um, what's going on next? Similar research is underway in Australia to selectively breed super corals. But scientists there have a warning for Palau. So this, this kind of selective breeding work has really started to ramp up in the last few years, mostly because people have seen their restoration efforts fail. Dr Quigley is running selective breeding experiments with corals from Ningaloo Reef on Australia's northwest coast, which has similar conditions to Palau's reefs. So we could call them like lucky reefs. They are in environmental conditions that are kind of buffering some of that heat. And um, indeed, we thought that Ningaloo was a reef like that. Ningaloo has just experienced a catastrophic mass bleaching event. It's worst on record. I think Ningaloo shows us this year that it's only a matter of time for even those lucky reefs. The global coral community are eagerly watching what's happening in Palau, holding hope that their scientific advancements will give corals worldwide a fighting chance. Back in Palau, Anne is a little skeptical that human intervention will save our reefs. For myself, as a Palauan person, when I think about a super reef, I don't really think about the technical aspect of how this is a new discovery of a potential solution to addressing climate change. I think that nature 
has its own way of caring for itself that is beyond us humans. Maybe Palau's heat tolerant corals are a sign that Mother Nature will look after herself in the end. Modelling shows corals can adapt naturally if global warming is limited to maximum 2 degrees Celsius. But last year was the hottest on record with temperatures exceeding 1.5 degrees Celsius. And the world has already lost 30 to 50% of its coral reefs. I think that's really important that we don't greenwash these kind of methods and that we're very clear that this is going to give us a little bit more time. Is it um, our selective breeding being the solution in the future to save coral reef? We know that we are not there yet. It is feasible. It's a lot of work, um, but we need more people doing this because we, we are running out of time. Whether it'll be enough to withstand the severity of future heat waves, we don't know. But there is one thing coral experts can agree on. The long-term solution is emissions reductions. We really need to work on a reduction of CO2 emission and greenhouse gases emission. So really work on this climate policy. 